Hey baddies, welcome to another Auntie Amy's Trashy Tarot. Today I'm doing another pick a card reading. This one is going to be all about what makes you the goat, the greatest of all time. So this should be a really fun, insightful, enlightening, and a very inspiring reading. That's the intention here. So I'm really glad you guys are here today. I hope you guys are hydrating, eating, and resting and taking good care of yourself. All right. Now, as you see before you, I have four piles of cards and I have four objects. These are going to be your psychic linking objects. I will be pulling more cards as I need to for clarity. All right. So the first group is going to be the skull. The second group is going to be the bell. The third group is going to be the candle. And the fourth group is going to be the bat. Now, I am going to include a little video for those of you who need a bit more time to see which group you're drawn to. Now, if you are drawn to more than one group, there may be more than one message here for you. And with that said, I'll see you beautiful, magical baddies, you greatest of all time baddies <laughs> on the other side. Bye, guys. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah Please say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say I cannot I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong, I won't stop to the top, so you better back off, I get lost I'ma stay last, stay Hey group one, all of you that selected the skull, this is going to be your reading All about what makes you the goat, what makes you the greatest of all time so keep in mind this is a general reading it's a general session so just take what resonates and leave the rest behind all right so let's get into the cards that came out in your pre-shuffle okay so the first card is animal uh there we go animal and let's see i want to see these cards next we have tinfoil hat we have unicorn. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. We have, um, well, this one, let me look at this one first. We have the magician. Okay. And then we have magical child. And it says daydreams and engages in imagina imaginative play. Fun childhood sees sacred beauty in the world, represents the part of us, of us which is enchanting. Oh, that's a lovely energy. And then we have anarchist. Okay, rebellious, freedom, liberation, free speech, break up establishments, firm beliefs, autonomy, philosophical. Okay. And then we have Crime Fighter. Oh, wow, you're like a superhero. A uh, strong sense of right and wrong, driven, dedicated, adventurous, conscientious, criminal justice, fair play, goal oriented. Wow, you're like impressive, Group One. You're very impressive. And you have a really um, unique energy. That's part of what makes you the greatest of all time. Like, you're definitely a one-of-a-kind type person. Okay, we have deficiency. Um, I feel like this is something that you may be a Libra, okay, because I'm seeing scales, and I see, like, you weigh things out. You compare things often, and often you compare yourself to other people, and that can be part of... Uh, your obstacle in life to get over comparing yourself to people. Um, we'll get back more to that card as the reading progresses. We have creepy clown, old fears, defense, courage. Okay, I think that's where the courage is coming from. The courage to overcome your fear um, about yourself and how you compare to others. Um, I sense like a lot of bravery with the magician, animal, unicorn. We have a kitty cat here. Kitty cat, I feel like there's some Leo energy here or, or sun energy. Uh, we have the sunflower. Ah, oh, there we go. We have spotlight, happiness, success. I feel like you're really meant to be 
like in the spotlight. I feel like, and I don't say that kind of stuff in my readings very often. So, um, I, I feel like people are naturally drawn to you once you get over this need to compare yourself because you really are one of the greatest of all time. Okay. You're meant to make an impact in whatever field you're in. And it may be the kind of impact among a group of friends. It may be the kind of impact among a community. It could be bigger. You know, it just, it could be in your field of business. We have horror, overwhelm, drama, anxiety. See, I feel that here. I feel like th this is like, this is like your mission in life to get over this fear. It's almost like some of you guys have a fear of success, although I feel like you've been set up for it, for success. Like you've been given gifts. And I feel like some of you guys don't realize how many gifts you've been given. You're a fucking unicorn, man. You're a unicorn. You, you're a magical unicorn. You're a magician. You got magical child. Like, listen, some people, and this can probably be found in your astrology chart, some people are born with these natural affinities for magic, for the craft, for the occult, for astrology, for different things like herbalism, things like that. And you have a natural magical gift. You might be psychic. You might be a spirit medium. You could be all of those things. You might be a channel, but it comes naturally. Now, I want to say something. Like if you're a creative and most people who have this energy have some kind of creativity. Um, a lot of times when you're creating, you're channeling energy, okay? You're channeling your gift into your creative thing, okay? Um, and I feel like some of you guys may be at the path, on the path, and at like a crossroads in your life where you're you're having to get over this and I feel it with a tinfoil hat and I feel this more like in your own head about you know who you are and what you're meant to be and because I feel with the animal here I feel a drive this unicorn has like a primal drive to succeed and it's probably why Whatever you want to do keeps coming up. I feel like some of you guys are like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. But there's this anarchist within you that's like, I was made for this. I was made to do these things. And then there's the other part of you that's like, but I'm, I'm not good enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not that enough. I mean, look at this person. Look at that person. I could never do that. And I feel like, you know, you step up for other people, okay? It's time for you to step up, up for yourself. I'm sorry, you guys. I have had some medication today <laughs> and your auntie's tongue is heavy. Okay. So I feel like, you know, the love and care that you give to others, the way you step up, because I feel like you're very charitable. I feel like you stick up for the underdog kind of energy. You're a crime fighter. You're like a fucking superhero. Hey. Hello, superhero. Like, what? What's your what's your costume look like? I want to know. Like, what's your superhero name? Tell me down below, because I feel like you guys uh, don't. Maybe you guys don't realize this. And I just I feel like the sunflower here, and then I see this glow, and I'm just like, you guys just don't even know. And I feel like many of you have a soft spot for children. Okay, uh, perhaps you had a really rough childhood and that's part of what is going on with this, this horror, this old fears, all this shit right here. And I'm going to tell y'all, like, listen, you are a magical fucking creature. You have been given very special gifts and it's time to express them. Now, some of y'all, yeah, y'all need to get some more training. Yeah, that's not fun. Yeah, it's not fun. But you know what? Uh, being able to really get into your your dream, your what you're driven to do will be worth it. It really will. It'll be worth all the other bullshit you have to do. Okay, let's get some tarot here. Tell me more about why my group one is the greatest of all time. Because <laughs> you are. You are. And I feel like with the anarchist here, 
I, I just feel this energy of um, some of you guys have a unique creative voice. Some of you guys, your business that you're going to create is going to help a lot of people break. I'm hearing like break cycles or um, it's going to help them like wake up to like new ways of living or being. <clears throat> Well, my throat's trying to close up. I feel like some of you guys have some powerful things to say. You're going to write something that's really going to change uh, people's perspective. Okay, we have the Eight of Pentacles and we have the Fool. You guys, <laughs> like, you're a pro. I feel like a lot of you in this group, and I'm just going to tell you, that you're the greatest all, of all time because some of you guys are very special souls that have incarnated at this time. Okay, you are, and this is what I feel like. I'm, fe and, you know, I'm totally reading this intuitively, okay? Um, I really feel like this group right here, it's almost like, you're an elevated, uh, I've used that word a couple of times the last couple of days. I don't like it, but you're like an ascended soul, okay? I want to use the term ascended master, but, you know, just sticky tape it there, okay? Don't, don't like label yourself that, but just, that's the energy, okay? Um, and you've kind of like put on a human suit, okay? And you're a pro, okay? You're a pro and you're here to kind of like, reading this intuitively, to kind of like guide the other little puppies, guide the other peoples who are wearing skin suits to find your people, to find your tribe. Some of you guys are teachers to the teachers, okay? There are some souls that come in and are meant to help the helpers, okay? Now, some of you guys are teachers to the people, Okay, some of you guys are teachers to your friends, okay, but no matter how you slice it, the teaching is healing. The teaching is through your medium, and it's being done at a higher frequency. I feel like literally, see how this, um, you see the shadow here? I feel like you just, that's a portal, and you popped up, and this is spirit, and we have this little black cat here. You, you may, uh. You may like kitty cats. You may have a cat. Some of you guys have a cat spirit around you. I can feel it right now. Um, very feline energy. You might be a Leo. I keep saying that, but we have a sunflower here. I'm just, I'm feeling that too. So, you know, of course you came in to be the greatest of all fucking time. It's, it's part of what you're here to do. And you're here to uplift not only yourself, your family, your friends, but huge sections of the collective, huge sections. And it's not like it's going to be like, oh, I'm heavy lifting. You're going to do it while you're doing your thing. Okay. It's, it's going to be part of your process, part of your mission, if you will. Um, tell me more. Oh, okay. We have strength here. A another Leo card. Okay. Um, there's something about this, um, Lion's Gate that's coming up. This is a timeless reading. So whenever you, whenever you see this, okay, and I've been getting this for uh, the last few readings for certain groups. So, uh, and you may have seen that in another reading. Um, I, I feel like your strength is impressive. Your ability to overcome this obstacle of like self-doubt of um, you're stronger than what you think you are. And I feel like when people really get to know you, they are impressed with you. They can't help it. And we have the four of wands here. Ah, oh. I think that you're part of the reason you're the greatest of all the time of all time is because you make people happy. People are happy to be around you. And that is something that you may not really have taken in. People are happy to be in your energy, okay? They're happy to know you. I think you're very entertaining. You're an entertainer. A lot of you guys are entertainers, okay? And that can be different ways, okay? But I feel, I, when I, I see and touch this card, I'm like, I feel entertainment here. Um, and 
I, I feel like people, people enjoy you and they trust you. Look at the little ones here. The little ones trust you. And I feel they're going to be drawn to you. Some of you guys have a special relationship with children, okay? Maybe you feel like you have a, a special calling to children. Um, or also, I'm getting LBGTQ with the unicorn here, okay? Uh, plus, LBGTQ, okay, LBGTQ plus, okay, <laughs> um, with the unicorn there. You may be in that community as well. We have uh, the six of swords here. I feel like even though there are challenges here, even though there is definitely um, some mental hopscotch that you have to do in your life to kind of like get to where you want to go. Because what I'm feeling is this is a deep wound of like self-sabotage for some of you. This is like a deep wound of constantly overthinking or not sure. Um, what, what I'm seeing here and how I'm going to explain this, and this is a general kind of thing, okay? But I'm seeing like someone who's about to go on stage and they have their costume planned out and they have it on and it's like, you know, three minutes to curtain and they decide, you know what, I'm going to wear the other costume. And they start changing and they forget, well, your costume goes with all the dancers' costumes. So if you change your costume, you're going to be off with them. And you kind of like get everything out of alignment by overthinking instead of going with the flow of what you've already decided. So I feel like there's this energy of kind of like interrupting your alignments yourself. Um, and this comes from, for a lot of you, from trauma. Uh, in this life. It comes from people who haven't believed in your abilities or your gifts. Um, and part of this is because a lot of you have this magical child energy and you've had it since you were a child, right? And you were different. You probably with this anarchist, you probably, you may have had some issues with, um, limitation with authority. You may have had some issues with people just trying to tell you how to be. I feel this energy of like people pushing down on you or trying to control or constrict you and you kind of like not able to express things the way you wanted to. This could be through religion. It could be through social norms. It, it, it varies. Okay. But it feels like this obstacle kind of manifested partially from this. And this obstacle is something that I feel like you have, you, it's almost like you have to constantly overcome this. And I want you to know that as you progress throughout your life, this will become easier. Yes, even into your elder years, you will probably still have to face this, but it won't be as difficult and there will be days where you're like, ah, don't bother me. <laughs> don't bother me with that. I've decided I'm going to do it. Done. Kind of thing. And then there will be days where it's like, ah, maybe. And you'll have to get a hold of yourself. So I, I feel like it's part of the block to your greatness. It's part of the block to your, um, your abundance. And I feel like, group one, if you can get a hold of this, and really allow yourself to be vulnerable in your expression, I feel like a lot of roads are going to open up for you. It doesn't mean that you're not going to take some of the issues with you. Of course you are. It's not a perfect situation. But it's definitely going to open up more awarenesses for you. It's definitely going to open up more um, more possibilities, more opportunities for you. Um, because I feel like there's a need for some of you guys to walk in to your greatness and accept it. There's a need here to accept the greatness, um, that you are because you are, you are the greatest of all time. 
okay? Um, and a lot of these issues are, you know, things that you have the strength and ability to overcome. Okay, let's get some more energy here. Tell me more about why my group one. What makes my group one the greatest of all time? The goat. Tell me more. I feel like with this tinfoil hat here, I feel like you are very open to new ideas. You are someone, I feel like, who probably has, um, you're probably very smart um, and intellectual, but in a creative way. So you may be a conspiracy theorist. You may uh, be a very creative writer. You may like very like sci-fi. You may like fantasy and things like that. You may be into the fae as well, uh, creative worlds and things like that, anime. Um, I'm just getting like a whole bunch of like creative inspiration um, that may be tied to like looking at the universe or the world from a different perspective that may be way different from what other people how they look at the world. We have a uh, sorcerer, 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 <laughs> ambition, willpower, creation. Ambition, willpower, creation. I feel like your willpower really is just about believing in yourself and going all in. Believe in yourself, go all in, okay? This will bring your greatness forward, okay? Uh, when you doubt yourself, go, you know, commit. I'm getting like commit. Commit to the thing that you decided, okay? Don't don't talk yourself out of your greatness moment, okay? Don't talk yourself out of it. Okay, we have faith, hope, inspiration, rejuvenation, okay? You have to have faith in yourself. Okay, you have to have faith in your conjure. You have to have faith in your magic. You have to have faith in yourself. You want the universe to have faith in you. You need to have faith in yourself. And I know it's hard. I do. I, you know, I, there have been moments in my life where I've really had to dig deep to have faith in myself. Okay, but you have to wear the armor of I am the greatest of all time. I am the greatest me that ever has been. And put it on and wear it every day because you are, you are the greatest of all time. You are the goat. Okay. And the only blocks you have really are yourself. It is you against you. Okay. We're going to take this card. Oh, there's two. We have conjurer. <laughs> I just said conjure a higher self, fertility, creativity. Do we have cre creativity, creation, creativity? Okay. We have the stand, courage, determination, fearlessness. You're, yes, I, you're going to have to be fearless. Okay. Um, you guys, I really feel like the energy coming forward is about you connecting to your higher self. Okay. Uh, it's really going to open up more, um, I'm feeling like a bright column of light, like aligning in your chakras. It's going to bring in a lot of inspiration and um, a lot of uh, details on your journey. Um, and I got to tell you, it's time to be fearless. It's time to go all in on yourself. And if you want this, if you want to experience this greatness, it's time. It's your time, all right? Because you are very creative. You're very insightful. You're very connected. And you deserve to have a beautiful experience here. And I know for a lot of you, you haven't. You haven't had a beautiful experience. It's been very tough. It's been very hard. But I also feel like you're here at a to bring in something from a higher level, from a higher plane. And I feel like if you connect with that higher self type energy, you will find that your creativity starts to flow in a more powerful way and you will co connect more deeply with um, that purpose. And it won't feel like, oh, I have to do my purpose. It'll be like more like I'm in the flow of alignment with my life, with my creativity. I'm living a life that I'm happy to get up and live every day. It's like you will be embracing your life and your greatness. And you will know that you're living your best life. You are the goat. You are the greatest of all time. 
All right. Okay, group one, that's what I received for you. I hope this was a helpful and insightful reading. If it was, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I would love to have you as a member of my tribe. And if you'd like to see more readings like this one, give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you beautiful, magical baddies on the other side. Bye, guys. Hey group two, all of you that selected the bell, this is going to be your reading all about what makes you the goat, what makes you the greatest of all time. So keep in mind, this is a general reading. It's a general session. So just take what resonates and leave the rest behind. All right. And I'll be pulling more cards as I go for clarity. And your auntie, me, Amy, is really, really medicated. <laughs> okay. So the first card is for fertility. Okay. All right. Okay. And the next two cards are feral and stay in your lane. Stay in your motherfucking lane, bitch. <laughs> stay in your lane. That was Wicker Man, the fertility one. We have Olympian will work to disprove naysayers. Loyal, inspired by impossible goals energetic, free from doubt and uncertainty, passionate. Ooh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful, you guys. Okay, let's kind of move these. Oops, how'd you get out there? Okay, we have killer. Oh, knows what to do to avoid suspicion. Charismatic, investigative, intelligent, methodological, trustworthy, and calculating. Ooh, she's a killer. How's that song go? I can't believe I just try to sing two notes. Okay, perfectionist believes uh, believes progress is best. Balance balanced understands your best is good enough. Does not overdo it and practices self care. Okay, all right, that's good. Okay, um, we have the hermit. Okay, that's lovely energy right there. We have bound 44. You may be obstructing your own progress or something may be binding you. Consider the scenario again and check in to see if it's a signal that you need to shift direction. Okay, we have bat intuition emerging flight. Okay, we have Haunted Doll, Childlike Drama, Unknown. And we have Jack-O-Lantern, Secrets, Hidden, Unclear. Woo, 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 woo. This is intense energy. Okay, um, first of all, I feel like you're the greatest of all time because I feel like you're very wise. You have a lot of internal knowledge of self, like self-knowledge. Uh, you may be into the occult. Um, and I feel like you may be somewhat of a loner. Uh, but you're very devoted to the people in your circle. Okay. Um, I think you have an air of mystery around you with the bat here. Um, with secrets hidden, with the jack-o'-lantern. Um, I feel like with the hermit too, you don't like reveal a lot of yourself to people. You may be a Scorpio. Um, you may have a lot of Pluto energy or some kind of weird or powerful like aspect with Pluto in your chart. Um, maybe Saturn as well, because uh, I feel a lot of occult energy with this group. Um, but I feel like underneath like the mystique, I feel like there is this heart of gold. Um, you're very protective of the people in your life and you're down for them. Okay. You're very down for people in your life. You love them fiercely. When you, when you make a friend, it's for life. Like, unless something happens, like you, you mean what you say and you say what you mean. 
But there are people who call you friend who don't know you as well as they think they do, right? Uh, okay, we have oh that the whole deck's in reverse. So uh, we have ghosts from another world. I get this ghostly feeling with you. Like I, I get this like hidden realm with you. Um, it's, it's almost like, are you a spirit medium? Are you one of those people that like seem to be haunted? They're always like have spirits around them or something. Some of you guys may be spirit mediums. Um, you may be someone who works with like underworld energy or underworld goddess god energy or spirits um but i feel like there may be people who are friends of yours that sometimes feel like you're a ghost like you're not around because you have this hermit energy and i feel like uh you withdraw from people um and part of the reason why you're the greatest of all time is because i feel like people dig your mystique they dig the mystery. Um, they sense there's something deeper there. They also know that you're very intelligent. You're very, uh, like, in this area of, I think it's like, it feels like the occult or some kind of deep, uh, like, it feels like scholastic or some kind of deep knowledge about, like, music or art or some kind of science or, or something, it's impressive. It could be astrology. Um, people enjoy talking to you about it. It could be, like, outer space. It could be the cosmos. Um, but there's some kind of knowledge that, like, backs up this mystique. Um, you bring drama. And I don't mean drama like Oh, they're so dramatic. I mean drama as in curiosity, as in I'm interested, as in people like you make life interesting. Do you know that? Do you know that like, okay, like you have the everyday people, you know, the people who, and, and this is not a judgment, okay? This is just the people, you know, who, you know, they get married, they have 2.5 kids, they live in the suburbs, you know, they get up and go to work every day, and their life is very beige, and that's okay to have a beige life. Beige lives are good, okay? But then there are those who are different, and some of those differences are rainbow differences, and some of those differences are are red and some of those differences are purple and some of those differences are beautiful different shades of velvet and different shades of dark blackness and voidedness and complexity with stars and layers of stars and colors and and mystery that's you that's your energy and so for the people who live kind of like beige lives and beige, like I said, I'm using the term beige because that's like the energy I'm feeling. It's not bad. It's people who are raising like children and trying to raise them, you know, as they been told kind of thing and, you know, raising them healthy and happy and all that kind of stuff. Okay. And there's no judgment there. You know, I, I understand that. Um, but then there are the other people, you know, and you're a very complex, interesting, and people who are living these very beige lives, like, they need the different colored, like, energies to help them get through the beige years. Because the beige years are just years. Because there will come a time when a lot of them will leave those beige years. For some of them, the beige will fade to gray right? But for others, they'll get out of those beige years and they'll live like violet purple years. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm using color as energy, but um, that's the best way I can describe your energy. You're the greatest of all time because your energy, your vibe makes life interesting. You're one of those people that just makes life more interesting. And it is your story, it's the way you look, it's the way you express yourself, it's the things you go through, it's the things you share, it's the things you don't share, okay? It's all of those things that make you the greatest of all time. Um, we need mystery. See this? Fire. To light my path. Look at that. 11-11. 
Look at that. I mean, how can you not want to like, what is that about? Like when you see that at your local McDonald's, you're like, what is that about? How did that come to our McDonald's? Like, where do they live? What are they about? You know, that brings excitement to people's lives. It brings interest. And some of you like shock people into like coming, like waking up out of their, well, for some of them, it's a beige nightmare, but you know what I'm saying? Like it, it wakes them up to like, Hey, your life is happening right now. And if you're not living the life you want to live, uh, you need to figure it out. You need to figure out why you're not living the life you want to live. There's also this fierceness here with feral and stay in your lane. Because I tell you what, and killer, even the killer here, because you are not one to be fucked with. There's something, even when you're just doing your own thing, this is very Scorpio, there's something vaguely threatening about you. And it could be the way you look, it could be the way you talk, it could be your intelligence. But I feel like people are intrigued and sometimes they are vaguely threatened by you. Um, and some people are very attracted to it. Like they think it's hot, you know. I do think some of you guys have a, a powerful temper. Um, and I will tell you, there are some people who think it's hot when you get mad. That might make you mad. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. Don't tell me that. I don't want to hear that shit. I, I get it, you know. But I'm just telling you what I get. All right. I think that when things get dramatic around you, you tend to pull away. I think when people try to force their way into your life, you pull away. I think you are the pull away artist. Um, and it just makes people want to know you more. You may have something in your natal chart that kind of makes you very charismatic. Um, you may be naturally charismatic, even though you have this ghosting energy. So it's almost like, it's like you, you visit with people or you spend time in their energy and then bam, you pull away. You, then you come back, you spend time in their energy and then bam, you pull away. And it's confusing for people. It's interesting. Um, they want more, but then they don't. Um, and they're not really sure about this. And it's almost like living with a spy or, or having a spy as, as your friend or something. It's, it's intriguing. Okay. And with this, this is the wicker man. And I feel like, I feel like, well, some of you guys, you know, you're into the occult. So there you go. I also feel like you guys have interesting experiences. I know that saying the wicker man it's an interesting experience is like if you ever seen the movie it's, that's extreme you guys have interesting stories um from your life if you have uh in, like unique hobbies or you're very passionate about some hobbies or interests something you're very good at or deeply interested in i think people love hearing you talk about it um I, I think you guys don't realize that you are an interesting speaker. People like hearing your stories. Um, they like having you around. And I feel like um, what you guys may not realize is that people know you have a heart of gold. Okay, they really do. Uh, this Olympian energy, you can't hide it. I feel like some of you guys try to hide your, your heart of gold because I feel like you fear being taken advantage of um, or people seeing you as like a pushover or something like that. Um, I think people know that you're hard to get to know, okay? Um, but they also know that you have a heart of gold. And uh, you would do anything for your friends or your family, the people you call family. We're going to get some tarot. Okay, tell me more about my group too. Why are they the greatest of all time? You have a mystique about you. Okay, you have a mystique or a mystery about you. Um, definitely. And I feel like the people in your life know that they can trust you with their secrets. With this card right here. I think you have secrets that you'll take to the grave, honestly. And I think people know they can trust you with their secrets as well. Um, I think sometimes you aggravate people with the things you don't tell them. 
Um, because I feel like there are people close to you that feel like they don't really know you or they think they know you, but they really don't. They have, there's that going on, but I feel like it's become, it's because in, at the heart of all of this, you are the hermit. Okay. You have hermit energy and there are times that you just need to withdraw. I feel like you keep some things to yourself because you feel like it's for me. You know, it's my life. And I share what I want. I give what I want. And I feel like you've grown into this where it's like, you know, not everyone deserves to know everything about me. Um, not everyone needs to be in my energy all the time because it's not good for me. We have the, is that the queen of swords? Oh, no. It is, ooh, is that the seven of swords? One, two, three four, five, six, seven. Oh my, the seven of swords. I feel like, yeah, betrayal, deception. There we go. Yeah. Pretense. I feel like you can tell when people are lying to you. I feel like that's why you don't have a lot of people that you consider close friends, because I feel like, you know, that most people are full of shit. Um, most people don't have good intentions and it's rare that you meet the ones that do. And so you wait for those people. Um, you also don't, you don't let people into your life who don't align with your energy. You just don't have time for that. I feel like you've probably been through a lot of betrayal in your life. You've had a lot of people fuck you over. So you don't have time to kind of like, be with people like that, like little lies or little, little whatever, like misunderstandings. You pay attention to that shit. It, it means something to you. Um, you don't dismiss it. I, I feel like um, it's almost like some of you guys who are a little older and have been doing this a while, it's almost like you're so psychic or so intuitive. You can like tell when people are lying to you. You just like that, that person's lying to me. You can tell when someone's being authentic. You can tell when someone ha has good intentions. And, um, that's another reason why you're the greatest of all time. Like you, you can just tell this bottom card is calling. We have the, is this the tennis swords? Doom, the alarming ta tale of doom. Yeah, this is the Ten of Swords. You will cut a bitch off. Um, if you let someone in your life that that really turns into like a betraying person, a liar, someone you shouldn't have let in your life, you will cut them off let in a legendary way. I feel like when it comes to cutting people off your OK game, I, I feel like you leave a mark. Uh, when you cut someone off, because I feel like you, you take it serious when you get fucked over now, like it's personal. And I want you to know that I know that you fucked me over. And I want you to know that I'm cutting you the fuck off for a reason. This is being done because you are a fuck up and I know your fuckery. Um, and they feel it. They feel it. A lot of you guys do magic. Okay, you do pretty vicious return to senders with a twist, with a twist and a twist. You know what I'm saying? Okay, we have two more cards here. Okay, we have um, the suite of pinnacles. This is how many pinnacles? The ten of pinnacles. The gang's all here. She's wearing pasties, but I'll still cover that up. Um, the ten of pinnacles, and we have the six of pinnacles. Okay, so. I feel like with the Ten of Pentacles, you know, it's about being abund abundant, okay? But it's also about like foundations of family, foundations of tradition, foundations that are going to grow like a tree, like generationally. I feel like you're the greatest of all time because a couple reasons. First of all, your friends know that you are this, the Ten of Pentacles. Like friends are family, okay? And you're down for them, like I said before. 
I feel like when it comes to uh, your money game and the things that you may be a Capricorn, um, the things you work on, you may have Capricorn in your chart somewhere. Um, you think about the future. Like you think about how your moves affect your generations, okay? Now, some of you guys are breaking like generational curses or patterns with this Ten of Pentacles and this um, Six of Pentacles here. There is healing going on around money and around foundations. I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull on that. We have the High Priestess here and we have this, the Ace of Pentacles. Okay. So I feel like you are, you have created, you've conjured um, a new beginning. Okay, in the area of money, in the area of this generational curse. I feel like you saw the truth in this. This is another reason why you're the greatest of all time. Okay, because you are the one in your bloodline, in your family, who's breaking this. You're overcoming this. And now I'm picking up on all these thoughts. Like these thoughts, uh, this is why you have hermit energy. You have hermit energy to get control of your thoughts. That's why you pull away from people to get uh, uh, control of your thoughts. You may have some anxiety issues. Um, you may be healing your sense of self. So uh, there may be a sense of uh, unworthiness that you've been healing. And this inner Olympian coming forward, this heart of gold coming forward to kind of help you heal. Um, you are the Olympian of your bloodline, okay? You're healing uh, lack, poverty. Um, some of you guys, you know, you've had family, you know, who've gone hungry, uh, who have lost everything, and it has left these energetic and physical scars upon family. And Many of you have pulled away. You've pulled, you know, you, st may, you still may have contact with family, but you're, you've kind of like isolated yourself and you've been working on healing this. Um, and I feel like there's been a lot of times that you've wanted to kind of quit. You've wanted to kind of give up on this because it's very difficult. You've had to really get out of your own way. You've had to really get out of your own way. This is why you're the greatest of all time, baby. Okay? Because... You have managed to get control of these very invasive parasitic thoughts, okay? You have been able to use your high priest, high priestess, inner Olympian energy, okay? You may be aligned with some ancient Greek or Roman goddess. I'm feeling energy coming forward, like Persephone's energy coming forward. The whole cycle of spring and renewal, um that whole pageantry of the Eleusian mysteries coming forward. Um, and now what's happening, uh, because you're the greatest of all time, is this new beginning, this new beginning for you that's heading towards this Ten of Pentacles energy. And it is building new connections, not just around money, but around family, about what is family, what is friend. And it's as if the hermit is able to come forward and you've healed the wound. And as it, as it begins to scar, it's like you find now the pieces the pieces that are missing from your life come forward. Um, and you're able to walk into this kind of high priestess, 10 of pentacles energy. Uh, you're able to fully embrace like the vulnerability of having people in your life. You're able to embrace the vulnerability of manifesting for some of you guys, great abundance, a uh, great possibility because you have broke this generational, um, issues and uh, emotional issues around money. You know, it's hard when you've gone hungry. It's hard when you've gone without to heal that shit, you know, um, where there's lack, you know, this card, the whole thing about the wicker man is they put the man in the wicker man to ensure there'll be a good harvest, you know, blood for crops, that kind of thing, you know, um, because of fear of lack, right? Like suffering, we have to suffer so we don't have lack. And I feel like that's being healed here. There is like connections that I don't have to suffer to build 
connections and family. Love doesn't have to hurt. Earning money doesn't have to, I don't have to work myself to the bone to earn a little coin. There are new connections, almost like new connections in your brain, new connections within yourself coming forward. And it's almost like you rise out of the muck of this as this great Olympian, okay, with golden energy, with the Midas touch, with your hands. Everything you touch is going to turn to gold, honey. Um, So be bold. You, You are meant to be bold in your action. You're meant to be fearless, okay? You're meant to overcome this. That's why you're the greatest of all time. You're the GOAT, all right? Okay, group two, that's what I received for you. I hope this was a helpful, insightful, and inspiring reading. If it was, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to re- I would love to hear from you guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I would love to have you as a member of my tribe. And if you'd like to see more readings like this one, give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you beautiful, magical baddies on the other side. Bye, guys. Hey, group three, all of you that selected this candle, this is going to be your reading all about what makes you the greatest of all time, the goat. So keep in mind, this is a general reading. It's a general session. So just take what resonates and leave the rest behind. I will be pulling more cards as I need to for clarity. And I just took a little smoky smoke break. (laughs) So I am highly medicated. (laughs) All right, so let's get into what makes you the goat, what makes you the greatest of all time. Don't you like the back of these cards? They're like little goats on the back. (laughs) Anyway, um, your card is dinner, and it is uh, Friday, not Friday the 13th, it's uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you guys. (laughs) All right, here we go. So let's read these three cards. We have creator, expressive, imaginative, innovative, create something of everlasting value, nonconformist, freedom of expression. Okay, you got a cute little hat on right there. Okay, we have guide, balance between head and heart. Divine, wise, sensible, shrewd, oh wow, okay, down to earth, measured action, skillful words, awareness. Wow, that's badass. Okay, we have Midas, a balance between gaining and losing fortune. That's good. Generous giving, entrepreneurial entrepreneurial. Did I say that right? Uh, Creative, good problem solving, and highly self-motivated. Wow. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. (laughs) Or vegan dinner. Whatever, whatever is your preference. We have awakening. Okay. I don't really feel like we need to read that. We have amalgamate, which means come together. Everything comes together. Um, and, uh, we have these cards. Uh, Cardinal, carnal, carnival mask, fun time feelings forbidden. Ooh, you might be hot. <laughs> Luna moth, faith, psychic ability, rest. Are you a psychic? Are you? Hi, hello, how are you? <laughs> so am I. So, yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay. All right. So let's push those up. And then we have, oh, okay, let's read this one. We have snake, release, energy, health. Also smart. (laughs) Also smart. (laughs) The snake means wisdom too. Okay. (laughs) We have the sun, y'all. The sun. Oh, are y'all sunny side up? Okay. All right. And then we have bitch. That, there's nothing wrong with being a bitch. I think, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing to be a bitch. Call me a bitch. I don't care. I'm a badass bitch. Don't fuck with me. Okay. We have troll. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> you get what you give. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so whatever. All right. 
Okay. So I feel like, just what I said, I think you're a badass bitch. That's why you're the greatest of all time. Okay. You got lots of really positive, like, energy here. I think you're highly aligned with spirit. Um, I do think you have the Midas touch, though. Uh, and I've said this in another reading. I think it was two where I said they had the Midas touch, too. So you may be drawn to that group. But I feel like you get really good ideas, like really inspired ideas. You may be a Leo. I say that a lot, but I pick up on Leo energy. And, and you may not be a Leo, but you may do this. Okay, you may have great fucking ideas, like super awesome ideas, but your follow through fucking sucks. Okay, it's not a judgment. It's just a reality. Okay, so I feel like for some of you guys, like that's your biggest challenge of walking into your greatness is getting out of your own damn way. Okay, and that's for a lot of us. A lot of us, we just get in our own way because you have like this God, universe, whatever, whoever this, you believe it comes from, given talent or touch or inspired, creative, inventive uh, ideas. Okay, uh, you are a creator. All right, um, you may build foundations. I'm getting master number 22. I'm also getting Gen X vibes here. Uh, that doesn't mean you are Gen X. You may be an older millennial. That may not be exact either. I usually don't get that kind of stuff. So, uh, but I'm going to say it because it's coming, you know. So, um, I feel like you probably are very psychic and you're probably learning. You're either learning how to accept it or... Um, I'm feeling different things. Like some of you guys are in denial, which I was in denial for many years. Some of you guys are learning to accept it. And some of you guys are already like, I accept it. I'm working on it. I'm expanding it. I use it. Um, I feel like once you like really get like through the whole like denial of it kind of stuff, um, things are really going to come together for you. Um, there's going to be a massive awakening of your abilities, your psychic abilities. Um, you guys are the greatest of all time because you're very gifted psychically. Um, some of you guys are witches, like you're magically gifted. Um, and some of you guys like are called to do something. You're called to do something, um, that is aligned with some kind of like spiritual gift here. Okay. Um, and I feel like for some of you, that's kind of different to hear because there's part of your nature that's very fierce. We have the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We have bitch. We have troll. Okay. So there's part of you that's very primal or fierce, like uh, badass bitch energy, okay? And I feel like you have this energy because it gives you the vitality and the power to do what you are called to do, okay? It's part of the balance of this. You are light and dark. You are shadow and and you are sunshine, like you, you are moon and sun. You are both of those things. And you are someone who is an example of coming into balance in this lifetime. Um, you are someone who will walk in that energy, okay? And you will use it in powerful ways. So let's get some other cards, <laughs> okay? Let's get some other cards. Tell me more about why my group three is the goat. Tell me why they're the greatest of all time. Okay. Um, I feel you're intense with dinner. Okay. Um, for some of you guys, like there's something about 
uh, your speech, your talking. You may like have a platform. You may be a writer. Um, there may be something about your voice or expression, throat chakra energy here uh, that you're called to do. Um, there also may be a blocking of your throat chakra. And it may be because like I'm sensing like, you know, we have light and shadow here. So you may be called to do shadow work where it involves like opening up your throat chakra. So you may be like going through some issues there. Um, but shadow work may be part of what you're called to do. It may be part of your journey. It may also be part of like this expression. So, you know, just take what resonates here because I'm feeling a lot of different energies. I'm feeling a lot of different energies here. Uh, tell me more about my group three. Okay, we have loneliness. Okay. Tell me more about why they're the greatest of all time. Tell me more about why my group three is the greatest of all time. Okay, we have Hades, the underworld. Okay. There is that underworld energy. Okay. We have, um, and see, I feel more the ghost energy here, the underworld energy. Tell me more. Okay. We have beauty. Okay. <laughs> I feel like, um, you guys, <laughs> there's a lot of spiritual presence around you, okay? And they're attracted to the sun energy that you have, this illuminating energy, this guide energy, this creative Midas touch energy. Um, it is part of who you are. It's beautiful energy, okay? Um, and some of you guys haven't really tapped this yet. Um, psychically, you haven't come in contact with it. It's, it's part of your healing energy that you have as you walk through the shadow work that you have, like dealing with some of these denser energies that are going on with the throat chakra. Um, because I feel like there's a lot of negative self-talk, um, or negative talk in general, um, where, it kind of blocks you, um, or an inability to speak your truth. Um, or like, I, I can, I can feel like the constriction here. Um, and I feel like as you, because dinner is eating, I feel like as you begin to work through this, um, I feel like there is going to be more of a physical expression of your truth. And this energy that you have, this like glowing Midas, yellow glowing, like auric energy um, is going to like manifest through your vessel, like into the world. And how, how do I mean that? I don't mean you're literally going to glow. Although some people may say, oh, you know, you have a, you know, you're, you have a golden halo or a golden, you know, a little golden sparkle in your aura if someone reads it. But um, it'll be more like your physical features, like you will, you'll begin to feel better. You, people will say, oh, your skin glows or uh, you will make changes to the way you look and you will feel more authentic in your expression. Um, because we have the sun and we have beauty here. And I feel like part of this uh, greatest of all time energy is really an illumination on your physical beauty. It's okay to be attractive. I know um, in this world right now, true beauty is kind of, um, it's almost like it's vanishing. And we see the, and there's absolutely no judgment. I'm not judging these people, okay? However, there does seem to be a kind of repetitive standard of, of beauty that has people looking similar to each other. And when we do that, um, we start to erase true beauty and uniqueness matters. Um, you know, people do, who don't have exact symmetry matters, like naturalness matters. Okay. Um, and I feel like for this group, part of what makes you the greatest of all time is really accepting where you are and allowing the beauty of that 
to kind of like really register, right? Um, because as this guide energy, as this higher vibrational energy, I feel like once you walk into that awareness of this higher energy, as you really connect with the consciousness of it, you will see the beauty of your humanness. You will see the miracle of the experience of every day. Um, you will begin to experience a consciousness that is within you, like the observer. Um, and it is, it is you. It's you at kind of like a higher state of being. And it's hard to explain what this is. But when you have it, you understand, although you don't completely understand, but you do have a unique awareness of the world um, and your experiences. Now, you may not have that viewpoint all the time. Okay, it may be something that comes and goes. And many people call this like um, like connecting with your higher self, um, the conscience, the observer. We're just going to call it the observer. Um, but it does give you a very unique perspective on the world. Um, and it really, when you start to see the beauty in being alive and the beauty in other people, especially other people who have been minimized, um, the world and your life changes. Um, when you start to take each moment as a gift and, you know, I'm not saying that happens every day, but I feel for you group three, there's a lot of like deep wisdom here with this group. This is not an ordinary kind of group of people. Th this is like a higher, I say a higher intelligence, but it almost feels like an interdimensional intelligence. Okay. Um, and I feel like you embracing your vessel helps you ground into this now so that you can bring forward these Midas touch inspirational processes um, and ideas and and things can come together for you, okay? Um, because I, I feel like, you know, I'm pulling into this underworld energy and I feel like you're really here to illuminate some very deep truths. Um, and I feel like the, it's almost like these are truths that you have to, um, experience. It, it's, it feels, it feels like knowledge gained by you know, you read it and then you experience it kind of thing. So what we have the, the Ace of Swords. It looks like it. We have the Ace of Swords and we have, yeah, inspiration. I'll show it to you guys. Okay. Tell me more. I feel like your journey, your words, what you come here to do is to help inspire. Um, and it has to do with this Midas Touch creator energy to help inspire. Um, for some people, like to help people grow, inspire people to grow, inspire people to do, inspire people to think more deeply. Um, inspire people to awaken because we have this awakening energy here and we ha also have the sun and inspiration. So a lot of you guys are meant to be seen. That's why you're the greatest of all time. That's why you have such tremendously deep awarenesses and power. We have the suite of pentacles, the four of pentacles. I think, and you know, I'm reading this intuitively at this point. I feel like you're here to help people 
inspire people past the level like of mediocrity. You're like helping people get over this mediocrity, this this uh, this acceptance of the the boring, the banal. I don't use that word. I don't even know what that means right now. Okay. <laughs> we have horror tarot, the five of cups. I, I feel like some of you guys may be going into counseling or healthcare or something like that, because I feel like you're really like, we have the five of cups here and it feels like you're here to kind of like help people get over a lot of like serious issues like regret, grief, hopelessness, depression, things like that. Um, you could be like a drug counselor or being inspired to be a drug counselor um, or to help people with depression. Um, it, it may be through art. It may be through, you know, becoming actually a psychiatrist or psychologist. It could also be like a nursing person or a doctor or a counselor. I'm getting like teacher. This could also be through like art therapy. It could be through music. There's a lot of different things. It could be that you have some kind of business that's related to this as well. You know, if it's not yours, don't take it. But I just feel like there's a lot of like inspired energy going forward, like trying to help people who are really suffering. Um, because I feel like this underworld um, shadow work energy understands suffering. There's a level of human suffering here that is understood and wants to help, um, help overcome it, help understand it so we can overcome it. We have the fool and we have the seven of pentacles. You know, this is, this feels like someone who is really wants to help people on their new journeys, like take, take leaps of faith. I also feel like you've had to take many leaps of faith in your life. And sometimes it's turned out, sometimes it hasn't. Okay. Um, because we have these cards here and, and I feel like a lot of you guys have been through these rough times. You know, you might be a grief counselor. I'm getting that too. You know, you've been through a lot of hard times. You probably have lost people. Um, some of you guys have, you know, lost people by their own hand kind of thing. And that's been difficult. So you, you, you help with that as well. Um, but there, there is a powerful, like you may be drawn to group two. There's just this powerful energy of really wanting to help people overcome. Um, and a great empathy for human suffering and wanting to see people start, start anew, no matter where they are in life, like trying to help people. You may have like, you, you may be somebody who has either been in prison or helps prisoners in some kind of way or people in jail, or there's someone in jail that, uh, you know, you, you want to help because of their suffering. Um, I just feel like there's a deep well of compassion and empathy here um, and power behind that and fierceness as well. And I feel like with all what what really makes this group so fucking powerful is that you have this very giving heart, this very giving soul, deep and rich with compassion and empathy, but you are one bad motherfucker. Like, you will not take any shit. I would compare this to, like, a nurse who is overworked, like, uh, a nurse like in a psychiatric war ward with a lot of depressed patients who uh, is she's in charge of like a whole bunch of them all by themselves and she just doesn't take any shit. Everyone is going to do what they're supposed to do because I have 18 of you guys to me, one person, and I, that's not even legal, but we're not going to talk about that right now, whatever, you know, so we're going to toe the line and you're not going to like me, but we have to do this to keep everybody safe. So it's just like, 
someone who takes care of business. Now, when there's enough people around, you sit around and not sit around, but you you're more easy. You're more easygoing. But when you have to buckle down, that's what you do, and you do it because you care. You're you're a badass bitch because you care about yourself and others. You have healthy boundaries and you teach people how to have healthy boundaries. And let me tell you something, if you are a drug counselor or an addiction counselor or work with people like that or really anything, like especially people who, I mean, I can speak on this, like people who have like mobility issues or, uh, you know, have like physical issues, you know, it's good to have boundaries, you know, because sometimes people need encouragement and sometimes that that's, you know, people get like learned helplessness and things like that. So they need, you know, nurses or helpers or, or whatever who will be like, hey, now I saw you do this the other day. I know you can do it. So come on, let's see you do it kind of thing. Um, so that's the kind of energy I get here. Like someone who is compassionate and caring, but don't fuck with me kind of energy. And it's very powerful. It makes you the greatest of all time because you're like so healing. You're so healing that even even if someone gets over on you, given the right amount of time and they show you that they've healed and changed or done whatever, you might consider helping them again because you know that people can change because you have and you believe in change. You don't believe in writing people off. Um, I would say out of everyone, you probably, out of all the groups I've done so far, you are probably the least likely to completely cut someone off. I think you give people time to heal. And I think even when you say don't come around anymore, I think you mean don't come around anymore while you're toxic. Like get your shit together and then, um, so I don't feel like you really ever cut people off. I think you leave the door open even if they're not aware of it because you have a big heart because you've been through a lot and you're a badass bitch. Okay. And I mean that in the best kind of way. Um, yeah, so that's what I got for you, group three. I hope this was helpful, insightful, and a fun reading. If it was, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'd love to have you as a member of my tribe. And if you'd like to see more readings like this one, give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you beautiful, magical baddies on the other side. Bye, guys. Hey group four, all of you that selected the bat, this is going to be your reading all about what makes you the greatest of all time, what makes you the goat. So keep in mind this is a general reading, it's a general session, so just take what resonates and leave the rest behind. Oh no, she's she's upside down. Okay, there you go. <laughs> all right, so um, I'm going to go through these cards and uh, I'll be pulling more as I need to for clarity. So let's get into it. So, okay, your first card is going to be Redeemer. Revelations, forgiving oneself and others, chooses a different life path after struggles, teaches others to live a different way of life. Ah, okay, we have the high priestess, okay? Let me put that, I want to put that there. I want to put that there. I love this card. <laughs> so, and we have uh, stuck. So we have that energy. We have rebel, um, unconventional, breaks tradition, inspiring, does not conform, challenges injustices, bold, speaks out against discrimination, independent. Okay. Wow, that's really powerful energy. And we have Medusa-like energy here as well. We have jester, uses humor as a tool to communicate versatile, uh, oh, to communicate. Okay. Versatile, a <laughs> comic relief, inspires others, sees others, flaws and fears, philosophical. Okay. 
All right, you're probably funny. We have Ninja, equipped with many different tools, disciplined, spiritual refinement, patient, master of disguise, observant, and stealth-like. Oh my, you are stealthy, like a kitty cat. <laughs> Okay, we have triggered. Ooh, you trigger people, don't you? We have Book of Shadows, Messages, Magic, manifesta Manifesting. Okay, we have Cauldron, New Ideas, Work, Creativity. We have Full Moon, Completion, Maturity, Growth. And we have Face. Ah. I feel like you're pretty. I feel like you're attractive. I want to tell you something. Throughout this entire reading, I have felt like there has been like someone, a spirit, one of my spirits, touching my right hand this whole time. Like every time I've shuffled cards, it's been like a weird kind of experience. So I just want to share that with you guys. Um, I feel like you're pretty. I feel like you're very beautiful. There's physical attraction here. Um, and I feel like you're funny. You have a really great personality. Um, and, you know, it's, it's weird because I, I feel like you also have a dark sensibility to you. Um, and this, like, dark sensibility triggers people. Uh, you have this rebellious streak uh, that triggers people. Um, and I feel like part of you doesn't mind it at all. You don't mind triggering people. You don't mind being that that person. Um, and, you know, I, I feel like you, there's magic here. So uh, you may be into magic. Uh, you may be a witch. Um, you know, I... I it's so weird. I feel like you may, may be a channel of some kind. You may be a witch. Um, and I feel like there's a lot of growth here because we have Redeemer. Um, I feel like you haven't always been the Redeemer. Um, I think you have moved from being this very stuck energy. I think some of you guys were stuck um, in some very dense energy for a long time. Um, some of you guys may be in that energy right now. It feels like it weighs on you. So it's something very heavy. Uh, it could be an illness. It could be a, a mental illness. It could be a physical illness. Um, it could be like a financial situation. It could be like poverty or homelessness or something like that. It's something very heavy. Okay. Uh, and it, it, it makes you feel immobile. And I want you to know, group four, like no matter where you are in this, that there are some that have escaped that. There are some that are a, that have gotten out of it because we have Redeemer here. And that's the energy you move into, okay? By tapping into like the stealthiness, paying attention to the details of your life, the rebellious energy, this energy of the ninja and the rebel will really help you find ways to get out of where you are. Your ability to trigger people is, is the same energy. That same energy that triggers people has the power to get you out of your situation. Okay. It's the same spark. It's the same energy. Okay. Um, and I'm hearing like, Listen, I've heard this before. Use everything you have, okay? And when a spirit says that, they mean everything. Every gift you have. I heard this years ago when I was in bed. Uh, use everything you have. And I kept putting limits on what that was. And every time I did, spirit was like, oh no, we meant everything. So everything, even the things you don't want to do, okay? Um, and I don't mean harmful things, but difficult things, Things that are difficult for you that push you beyond your boundary, that kind of encourage your growth and your maturity, okay? Because that's part of your journey is to get you out of the stuck energy into this mature energy where you can see like your prettiness, your beauty, your inner beauty. You can understand why you trigger people, okay? Because... There is this attractive energy that doesn't mind triggering people. 
There is this attractive energy that doesn't go along with the status quo. And with the energy of Medusa here, it tells me that, you know, some of you guys have experienced something very intense in your life that made you wake up to the reality of there could be danger attached to your attraction. So, you know, that could possibly be part of the stuck energy as well. I feel like you have a really magnetic personality. So let's get into these cards. Let's pull some tarot. Um, I, I feel this, uh, this energy with the jester. I feel like you entertain your friends. Um, I, I feel like you don't mind doing this. Like some of you guys may DJ. I don't get DJing that often. I, I think this may be the first time I've ever gotten that. Um, you may DJ or want to DJ or there's something about like house music here, um, or goth night or something like that. Um, I feel like some of you guys are super funny. You have an amazing personality. Um, that's part of what makes you the greatest of all time. I feel like you also may have a dark humor, a super dark humor, okay? And it has to do with this stuck energy, and it may have to do with this Medusa energy, the reason why Medusa's here, okay? Um, sometimes when we go through very dark things, we develop a very dark sense of humor, and it's meant to help us get through it and survive, okay? So don't judge yourself for your dark sense of humor. Your dark sense of humor, though, may trigger other people, okay? And I feel like that you're like, that's fine. <laughs> I don't mind. We have the two of wands here. So we have, that's the 11-11 card. Okay, tell me more. <laughs> Is she a zombie? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm the living dead, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel like some of you guys come out of nowhere. Like, I'm the living dead. I rose from the dead, bitch. Like, you counted me out. I'm not out. The rubble here. Like, you counted me stuck. I'm not stuck. I'm not fucking stuck, bitch. I feel that. I feel your rebellious energy. Like, I'm not fucking stuck. Don't count me out. We have the Eight of Cups here. Don't count me out, bitch. Uh-uh. We're heading for higher ground, y'all. We're heading for a bigger pumpkin, bitch. <laughs> yes, I got fucking issues. So do everyone. I hear that. I hear that. So does everyone. So does everyone. If I trigger you, then get the fuck away. Get the fuck away from me. I don't care. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of energy of like in order to kind of like get out of the stuck energy, you have to kind of like get into the energy of I don't give a fuck. I don't give, it's like, it's, oh, like, this is weird. I'm like seeing a boat where the starter, it, it, it isn't starting. The engine isn't starting. And like every time the engine like pulls it's like saying, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Like you can't make it, you can't make it go anymore. You just don't care if it starts anymore. And the engine's telling you, you I don't give a fuck. It's beautiful because it really relieves you of a lot of the constraints of judgment. Like it frees you and it opens up new realms of possibility. We have the queen of swords. Yes. It's like this ability to like make decisions. Pick a bubble. You pick your bubble and you go. And you move forward. It's like a commitment to yourself. It's almost like you apologize to yourself for not for not being there for you. It's like the rebel energy transforms, transmutes into the Redeemer. It's, it's like you bring that rebel energy within yourself and you heal the stuck, the stuck energy, not stuck, the stuck, <laughs> stuck energy. And you're able to kind of like illuminate your countenance, your face. You're able to see the truth of you and what a strong 
person you are, how you are a survivor. You may shift from feeling like a victim to a survivor. And you may further shift into this energy of, I'm not just a survivor. Like, I'm a thriver. I'm a healer. I'm a, I don't, you don't fuck with me, bitch. I'll come for you kind of energy. And that might be where the witchy energy I'm feeling is. I feel like this is someone who has transmuted the rebel energy into the redeemer energy and has now and is now learning how to give, how to help others. Uh, And a lot of this is done through just living your life because your life in itself is kind of like, well, I'm going to say it, your life and the things you've been through is kind of like a work of art in a way. And I don't mean that like, oh, well, all the shit I've been through is artistic. No, no, I would never say like that kind of thing. It's horrible. It's awful. It should never have happened to you. Okay. But I'm saying it is, it is so deep. It is so meaningful that it it transcends the norm and it becomes something more you have a lot to share you have a lot to give to people because you've transformed a lot of of really dark energy Behind this rebel energy, although it can be very beautiful, there's also a lot of darkness. There's also a lot of like um, inner turmoil because of the things that have happened, because of why Medusa is here. Okay. Um, And I feel like there's also this energy of kind of turning on your body or your vessel uh, because of the things you've been through. So, there had to be kind of a an acceptance of the vessel and a healing. It's almost like a rebellious energy of self-acceptance. And that act in itself transmuted that rebellious energy into the Redeemer. Because you redeemed yourself from, you called your power back from those who ultimately took it from you against your will. They violated your will. It's very powerful when you do that. When you are able to say, look at yourself and all your flaws and all your wonder and say, that is me, motherfucker. And I am going to embrace my face, my body, who I am. The good and the bad and the ugly. This is me. This is who I am. I'm no longer going to be like existing. Because some of us who have been through things, like the reason why this Medusa might be here, sometimes we exist kind of disassociated from our body. And that can allow for a lot of things to happen. So I feel like for you, Group 4, the embracing of the vessel is extremely powerful. Um, It's part of this transmutation into the Redeemer energy. And I feel, I'm reading this intuitively, as you see, she's on her throne. And I feel like this healing energy is coming out in these bubbles. It's like you send out healing energy to people. And it could be through laughter with a gesture. It could be through sharing your story. Some of you guys have a really inspiring story about this transmuting this energy, okay, how you did it. Um, Some of you guys have, um, some of you guys ache for some kind of normalcy here. And And I have to tell you, honestly, that, listen, for many years, I tried to force myself in certain molds to be normal. And doing that trying to make yourself fit a mold that is not for you, you will spend years of your life 
in denial of who you are, okay? You make peace with yourself. That is one of the things we should teach in school. How to make peace with your body, with yourself, with where you are. I feel like it is one of the most important things a human being can do is make peace with themselves. We're not all at peace. Some of us are, but a lot of us aren't at peace with ourselves. And if we're not, there's something going on. And we need to find out what that is. And I feel like for you guys, that transmuting that rebel energy really not only is it powerful for you, but it triggers people. It triggers the people in your life and around you in different ways. Some people don't like it. They don't like you empowered. They don't like you coming forward and being like, this is me. This is who I am. This, the, you know, you in an empowered state is threatening to them. And it's threatening because they feel like they could never do it. They could never rise this way. Um, and seeing you do it reminds them that they can't or they feel like they can't. Um, and for others, you know, it, it is, it makes them angry because they don't like what you've become. They don't like it because they don't understand it and they never will because they're very close minded. Those people, you're not going to change their mind. They have to come, they have to go through their own journey. Okay. And their journey is theirs and your journey is yours. And we just have to walk into the acceptance of that, right? Okay, let's get a few more cards here. Tell me more about my group four. Tell me more about why are they the greatest of all time? You know, because despite your struggle, despite what you've been through, you can still laugh. Some of you guys are in the middle of your stuckness. And you, you still laugh. You still find reasons to laugh, you know. And the ability to do that is, whoo, it is, it is impressive. This card fell out. We have Hecate. I, I may not have pronounced it like you do, but uh, we have Illumination. Look, the crown is on fire. Her hands are on fire. It's powerful. Like your energy is so powerful. And and I feel like this is this is it doesn't matter your gender. This is like divine feminine energy, like rising, transmuting energies at a very high level. Um and an extremely magical person. You may be using your magic to do this. Um, and I feel like there's a ton of healing energy here and it's important that you remember your healing modalities. Okay. Um, I feel like many of you guys were healers in past lives and those healing modalities come through in this life as well. Some of you guys were in the cult of Hecate. Okay, in a past life, all time is now, but we're going to reference it as a past life. Um, and you're here to bring through that magic into this life. It may not manifest like it did before. It may manifest in this redeemer energy. Um, you guys have a powerful ability. Some of you guys through your humor through your sense of humor, through your personality. Um, these bubbles, these bubbles here, bubbles make everybody happy, right? You might call them orbs. We're going to call them bubbles. I feel like you have a unique perspective. I'm being pulled to the ninja, and, and I feel like your attention to details is powerful. I think you have learned a lot and you are learning a lot when, when you're in the stuck, the stuck energy. I feel like you learn a lot more than you think you do. And you may get, you may get discouraged because the triggered energy. And I want you to know, 
and a lot of you may trigger people by the way you look. And I, I want you to know that when you trigger those people, it's not personal. Okay. It's really important to not take it personally. The people you trigger, they're being triggered because there's work to do. Okay. They're triggered because there's inner hurt. There's their own inner shit going on and you're not going to solve it then and there. Okay. Um, and you have Medusa energy and that triggers a lot of people. It's very fierce. It's very bold. Um, she's a badass. Okay. And, um, I feel like there's this energy here of really, especially with, uh, masculine energy that oversteps their bounds. I feel a very strong energy of like not putting up with that kind of stuff. So you may be known as someone who like doesn't put up with a lot of boundary crossing when it comes to that kind of thing. Um, you may speak up a lot, uh, and that may trigger people. Uh, I feel like you don't let things ride. You don't look past things. And, you know, I will tell you, I'm Gen X. Uh, you know, we overlooked and looked past a lot of things, especially at work, you know, because um, at that time, uh, there was there was nothing we could do. We would lose our jobs if we said, like, our boss did this or whatever, you know. I mean, I was... I was hugged and manhandled many times by many bosses and there was no way to go. I mean, I needed, I needed my job. I could tell you stories about it, you know? Um, and I'm, I'm thankful now that I, I feel like maybe there's options, but more and more now in the world, I'm not sure. And I got to tell you, I feel like Medusa is rising. Like her energy has been rising for several years, but even more so. Uh, and I feel in group four, I feel like you're the greatest of all time because you have this energy. You have this dark goddess vibe. Um, but it's presenting in a way with a very charismatic personality. Um, someone who is, is approachable. And, um, it's very unique. It's a very unique vibe. It's like, you can see in the dark, uh, you're allowed in the room with the people because you have a good personality. And when the lights go out, you can see in the dark. So you can see the truth of it all. And, um, I feel like there's a lot of triggering for you around like people see your face, your beautiful face. Okay. Um, and they think, ah, oh, la, 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 the beautiful face. And then they get the Medusa behind the beautiful face and they're triggered. They get truth. Uh, they get like, oh no, we're not going to overlook that misogynistic comment. You know, we're not going to look past like your racism. We're not going to look past things like that anymore. Um, and uh, that's good. That's a great thing. That is the spirit of the age of Aquarius. No more bullshit. No more of this. Like we're going to mature as a collective. And I feel like you're part of that, you know, and it's hard when you're a forerunner. It's hard when you're at the beginning because it's rough. It's a rough trip. Um, and you take a lot of hits, you know, uh, but there's power here in group four. There is more power than what may appear on the outside, which may leave some people kind of shaken. We have Kali, love. We have Medusa, injustice. Medusa came out for y'all, okay? Um, ultimately, I'm getting like chills. Ultimately, you guys do this, have this energy because of love and because of the injustices that are going on in the world and in your life and the things you see in your community. Um, you do this because ultimately you have managed to still have love for your fellow beings. Um, and it's, it's a beautiful thing, you know, because not everyone's able to still maintain love um, because there's just been so much. There's been so much, right? Um, but you still believe in humanity. 
That's why you're here. That's why you're doing this. Um, but you also understand that there needs to be a balancing of the scales. And I feel like that's what this Medusa energy is doing here. Um, that's why group four is the greatest of all time. You have Medusa and Kali energy. You are here to help facilitate great change. And you are a transmuter of a very dense energy. And you transmute it into healing energy. And a lot of you guys are beacons of, of light, literally. And it's very beautiful. So that's what I got for you, Group 4. I hope this was helpful and an insightful reading. If it was, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'd love to have you as a member of my tribe. And if you'd like to see more readings like this one, give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you beautiful, magical baddies on the other side. Bye, guys.